Hey guys. So in a recent blog post, they uh, say they're removing something called autocast delay. They say essentially when selecting the autocast option on a staff and then clicking an NPC, there's a one tick delay before your first act attack actually fires. So in this video, I want to talk about uh, what autocast delay actually is and why it even exists. So let me show you some of the triggers that we have. Um, these are basically like the number of different interactions you can have with an NPC. So app, this means interacting from a distance. So this image here, uh, if you're trying to interact with an NPC and you're within 10 tiles of it, then the app trigger will run for that NPC. But if you're up close, uh, if you're directly adjacent to the NPC, then the op trigger will run. And these triggers, um, if they're not defined, like if an app trigger is not defined, then it will default to the op trigger. And if the op trigger is not defined, then it will display the nothing interesting happens message. So that's like, that's where that message comes from if you're curious. But, um, so yeah, so we have app triggers and OP triggers, and then one through five here, this is like defined in the config sorta. So, uh, the one, ones are usually used for talking twos are usually used for attacking and then three through five these are usually used for like miscellaneous so like pickpocketing banking or uh yeah uh pickpocketing banking or trading yeah that's the other one and then this u here this is like when you use an item on an NPC, and then T is when you use a spell on an NPC. So what, you know, what actually are these triggers? So let me show you this RuneScript file. So the way these triggers are used is they're defined here, essentially the server code is defined here. And um, each NPC can have their like own op NPC trigger, or they can have their own like trigger essentially. This underscore means um, it applies to every NPC if the NPC doesn't have their own trigger defined for this type and uh, so yeah so this is like the default behavior of op npc2 the default behavior of app npc2 and if you remember npc2 triggers are generally attacking so these are the default this is like the default behavior for attacking NPCs, these two triggers here. All right. So uh, I just want to like clarify that these like scripts were written for a 2004 private server. We use like a reverse engineered version of RuneScript. And we have like very similar limitations that the devs have at Jagex. So this is just like the code. All this is just like the code we came up with to produce the same results we see in old RootScape videos. So I just want to clarify that. This is the actual RuneScape code.
this is just like reverse engineered code using like the RuneScript language. All right. Um, so yeah, here's the op and uh, app scripts here. Uh, so let me just give you a rundown for this script real quick. So when you click on an NPC and you're within op distance, so if you're directly adjacent to it, it runs this trigger and then it checks if you're in the mage arena, which is like, this is so you can't like fight the battle mages. But uh, you know, we don't need to worry about this. It has like some sort of singles check. So like, it doesn't let you attack an NPC if you're being attacked or if the NPC is already attacked. And then it jumps to this, what we call a player combat start label. So uh, labels that you jump to, these execute instantly. So let me go to this label here. So then it runs to this label here and it checks if the combat style is ranged and then jump to this player ranged attack label. It then it checks if you like if the auto cast is enabled and spell is selected. It's like the conditions required for auto cast. And then if that's the case, then run the POPNPCT trigger, which these are when you use a spell on an NPC. And then um, if everything fails, you know, if none of these conditions are met, then default to melee attack. And um, both the app script and op script, they both use this sort of label here, which is why it's in a label in the first place. Um, the app script has another, has a special command p app range. This is used to like limit the the ten tile range of like the ten tile default range of app scripts. So, um, so I like. Uh, we have like this attack range variable here. We check it by looking at the weapon and then also looking at the style. And then if it's a melee weapon, then the attack range will be like one or zero or whatever, however it was defined. And then, yeah, this P app range essentially just limits the it runs a script again, but uh, with a certain, like, with different uh, range. Uh, <laughs> that's, it's like the easiest way to put it. But uh, on to what actually causes the delay. It's actually, uh, it's actually this p op mpct command. See, in RuneScript, or I'm sorry, in RuneScape, you can only have one interaction per tick. So these p op commands, these, if you don't know what they do, they essentially set the interaction after this whole script is over and it ends early if you're using this return here. But, um, Combat in RuneScape is a base is basically just an interaction loop that keeps running these op and app scripts. These uh, op mpc2 and app mpc2 scripts. It just runs these continuously. So if we go into 
player melee, uh, player melee attack, this label that's jumped to down here. If you go into this label here, see if uh, if you attacked recently, then it just doesn't continue. It it continues the attack. It causes you to interact with the NPC again, but it doesn't like your player won't hit basically if you attacked recently. And then uh, again down here, it has this p op npc command which tells the game to interact with the npc again which will run this script here so it basically just loops through continuously until the npc dies which is usually here so if the npc's hp reaches zero then OP MP, uh, P op NPC2 isn't called and you stop attack. But um, yeah, so this P op NPCT by default will only run the next tick. So the reason why they did it this way is probably because they probably didn't generalize magic very well so they probably had like they probably have like a label for each spell that both of these triggers jump to that's not how we do it in two and four but two on four escape but the way Jack probably does it is that they didn't generalize magic well enough where they could just call the label in here, like player, like melee and range. They instead had to change the interaction with the NPC, essentially, instead of just continuing the default interaction here. So, yeah. Um, honestly, in my opinion, I, I kind of like auto cast delay. It's like an ancient relic, you know, I feel like it's existed forever. It's like, the only reason why it exists is because they didn't generalize magic very well. So they just like, oh, it's a, let's just change the interaction, you know, instead of like having an actual OP NPC2 for magic. And, uh, hopefully I explained stuff well enough in this video. Uh, I could explain like these like so like some of this like weird commands here like DB DBs and stuff. You don't really need to know this stuff. This is basically just storing data for each spell. But uh Anyways, thanks for watching. You know, I could go into a lot of stuff in this video, but uh, yeah, I think that's enough. Anyways, yeah, see you.